My call to action has been answered. Before I start this week in esports and gaming today, I want to give a quick shout out to Sean Zhang of Talon Esports for sending over the shirt that I'm wearing for Talon Esports, as well as a very, very high quality hoodie. This is uh, one of the best hoodies I've seen. It's it's made extremely well. Um, and, you know, they're doing great at MSI. They finished third, fourth. So uh, I can only say so much about it. And this is not an ad, but they just sent over some really nice merch. So shout out to them. But without further ado, let's dive into this week in esports and gaming. There's so much to cover for the penultimate week of May 2021. I'm your host, Mark Kai, and let's get right into it. For our first top three story, the NBA and Fortnite partner up together. They're going to bring content from all 30 teams in the NBA to the Fortnite game store as of last Friday. NBA branded content will include team jerseys, cosmetic accessories for characters. And they've also announced the crossover, which will also feature a five day competition, as well as team battles, which will allow players to represent their favorite team in the basketball league while playing the battle royales or an in game currency or V Bucks. So, my thoughts here I know they've worked hard on this for a while, given that it's coinciding with the NBA playoffs because this promotion is one key thing about marketing which is timing the nba is one of the few sports leagues that i feel still captures the attention of young demographics and with that having one of the youngest average age for viewers in comparison to the nhl the mlb or other sports leagues this is great as it also opens up a new revenue stream for the nba and it enables epic to also promote parts of sports and culture in their game so epic's team has been at the precipice of huge activations like the travis scott concert in fortnite they're no stranger to these cool activations so keep it up epic as well as the nba Twitch, they've introduced local subscription pricing. What this means is that before, all subscriptions across Twitch were $4.99 USD for any country you were in, and they realized that became prohibitively expensive when it came to some currencies, and while the change could result in some decreased revenue from some Twitch streamers, Twitch stated that in an early test with localized pricing in Brazil, the company actually saw streamer revenue and total subscriber count more than doubled, and they're rolling this out first in Brazil, Mexico, Turkey, then to most countries in Asia, Latin, and Middle East, Africa, and Europe. My thoughts i think this is really good for twitch and its creators globally youtube has been killing the game as far as supporting their creators in regards to donations and memberships being able to be sent across so many different currencies they've created a whole fund for the shorts platform so twitch is finally catching up here a little bit this is a good play from twitch and also better so hopefully more fans can support their favorite creators i'm curious to see if gifted subs and things of that manner also increase since people are more able to give subs in other countries might me see uh ludwig sub count record potentially broken probably not for a while but who knows Warner Media to join Discovery in a $43 billion deal. AT&T and Discovery announced earlier this week that they've reached a deal where AT&T will sell off all of Warner Media in a standalone merged company with Discovery. Under the terms of the deal, AT&T will receive $43 billion to part with Warner Media Division, with AT&T shareholders also receiving 71% of the new company's stock and Discovery shareholders splitting the rest of it. The companies argued that the transaction will give AT&T money to invest in its mobile and broadband efforts, especially the role of 5G and fiber networks while Discovery will boast a larger library of film, TV, and other content to bolster its value in the streaming business, specifically HBO Max and Discovery+. Plus. So my thoughts here, it's interesting because Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment, or what WB Games, was not mentioned really at all in this announcement. I think Discovery are seeing more of this as a mesh between HBO Max and Discovery+, Plus, rather than anything to do with gaming. With that being said, I'm sure it'll affect Warner Brothers Games at least a little bit in the direction of the studio, as they've made lots of series such as Batman, uh, Injustice, Gods Among Us, Mortal Kombat, and many more. For partnerships, Enthusiast Gaming partners with Coldplay. Both parties look to create a fresh, unique musical experience that coincides with the release of Coldplay's latest single, Higher Power. To kick it off, a dedicated streaming event took place on LG's Twitch on May 20th that featured Coldplay. Face It partnered with Death Wish Coffee. The partnership for NACSGO players will offer a series of campaign activations for Face It users to participate in. This includes missions, community nights, and sweepstakes to potentially win a year's worth of free Death Wish Coffee. Overactive Media partners with Kavya, where Mad Lions will gain automated reports for tournaments, streams, and social media tracking as far as the deal. Loud partnered with Payet, the brand of Brazilian stylist Pedro Andrade, as well as Itaú Bank. For the first partnership, Andrade has become the creative director of Loud Apparel, which will include development of collection for the organization. He's previously collaborated with Nike, Ryder, the NBA, Budweiser, as well as many others. Loud has launched their fashion division last week. And for the second partnership, Itaú's logo will be on Loud's jersey and will continue with a documentary series on Loud's YouTube channel called So Most Loud. Evos Esports partners with Puma. The collaboration will see a co-branded tracksuit that will be given to players representing Evos. Both parties will also launch a range of activations that include physical and virtual items. Customers that purchase the tracksuit will also receive Evos Battle emotes, which can be used in the Mobile Legends Bang Bang game. 
Hikaru Nakamura partners with Stella Artois. They will create a new live streaming program called the Bullet Chess Speedrun Challenge, where viewers of the challenge will also have the opportunity to win very Stella Artois branded products and play against Hikaru in chess. E-United has partnered with Apple Pay as its exclusive payment option for its merchandise store and tournaments. They will be also launching a new series of online tournaments under the name E-United Arena. For finance and M&A, Bad Robot Games raised $40 million in their Series B. They plan to build out both studio and co-development sides of their operation, as well as create games that cross platforms, cross mediums, and are based on IP originating from both games and linear content with the new funds. The funding round was led by Galaxy Interactive, along with investments from Horizon Ventures, Iconic Capital, and Tencent. Take-Two reported $3.37 billion in revenue. Recurring consumer spending was up 48% year-over-year and represented 64% of the company's total net bookings, a larger share than ever before. NBA 2K21 has exceeded Take-Two's expectations and has now sold over 10 million copies, while the franchise has 2.3 million daily players and recurring consumer spending has been up 73% year-over-year. Overall revenue was up 9% and net income was up 46% to $589 million for Take-Two. The Game Band, they raised $3 million. The Blazeball dev will use this to expand its development team and release Blazeball on mobile platforms and go towards unannounced projects. For workforce changes, Jordan Sherman joined IGC as the CCO. Jordan was previously part of Gen G since 2018, heading up revenue efforts. Prior to esports, Sherman was at the MLB and the LA Clippers as the Director of Corporate Partnerships. Hugo Tristow joins Nuzu as the Esports Market League. Tristow has worked previously for some esports orgs including Keed Gaming as the Head of Sales and Business and was at Payne Gaming as Director of BD and Gaming before. Roberta Hernandez joins ESL Gaming as the SVP of People and Culture. Hernandez will align talent strategies and programs that will attract and retain the best talent for the esports brand. She held positions at Zynga, Red Bull, UMG, and FilmTrack before. Alfred Chak joins the esports engine as the COO. Chak will collaborate with the leadership team on short and long-term business strategies, as well as executing business expansion and growth plans. Chak previously served as the CFO and COO of IMAX Entertainment Division. The ByteDance CEO Zhang Yiming will be stepping down by the end of the year since Yiming wants to transition into a more long-term strategy role within the company. The fellow co-founder and HR lead Liang Rubo will take over the CEO position. As far as new stuff goes, Misfits Gaming Group, they launched the Misfits Agency, a media company for brands to get into gaming and esports. The agency will aim to bridge the gap between generational audiences through content creation, with Amy Palmer becoming the Misfits Agency's president. The Apex Legends Global Championship announced crowdfunding. The original $1 million prize pool could potentially cap out at $3 million via fan-purchased item bundles, so we see another esport enter into crowdfunding beyond the famous Dota 2 esports. Riot Games unveiled its first jump into mobile esports dubbed the Wild Rift Origin series. The Origin series will feature players from Europe, CIS, Turkey, the Middle East, and North Africa competing in a land this August. Teams will compete for a share of €300,000 as a prize pool. The University of Warwick announced they are investing £275,000 to their new flexible esports center. The esports center will help stimulate innovation in the school's newly refurbished basketball court and will cover initial physical infrastructure and equipment. Logitech announced the Adaptive Esports Invitational to support disabled gamers. Logitech will expand the competition this year to the public in certain regions while still partnering with Able Gamers, Adaptive Action Sports, and Mount Sinai. Credit to Esports Insider, the Esports Observer, Dot Esports, Games Industry Biz, and the orgs themselves for providing the images and press releases. If you know someone who'd find this valuable, I would appreciate you tagging them down below. And once again, have a great day, everybody.